Today on Ultra Simple Golf, we're going to be taking a look at the great Tiger Woods, arguably the best golfer that has ever played. But honestly, his game is in total disarray at the moment, and with his recent withdrawal from the Ryder Cup, all sorts of questions are being asked, can he come back to his very best? So we're going to be taking a look back to the very beginning. We're going to start off by looking back to 1997 and that memorable Masters win, when he just came upon the scene and dominated the field. He's had three swing coaches since then, and we're going to take a look at some of the changes that each guy has made in the process to getting him to where he is now in 2014. So hopefully you'll be able to take something away from this show that'll really make a difference to your game. So Dad, we're really big Tiger Woods fans, and you know, watching his success over the last 16 or 17 years has been really great fun. But it's almost become frustrating now because Quite honestly, he's tampered with near perfection over the years. And, you know, that spell from 1997 to 2004, it was just phenomenal what he was achieving. What are your thoughts on what has taken place over that period of time? In my very humble opinion, I believe he tampered with something or trying to fix something that wasn't broken. That old adage. Now, a quick example would be Arnold Palmer in my era. I can remember in 1966 he was going away from the field, I think he was seven ahead of Casper with nine holes to play in the American Open and Casper made a run at him and with three holes to play I think he was only three ahead. Prior to that all his life he'd drawn the ball very effectively but he tried to cut the ball due to Nicholas's success he thought left to right was the way to go. Just giving you an example of how if you tamper something that ain't broke, you're in trouble. At 16, he now said, hang on, I'm in trouble. I better go back to something I know, which is a, a little draw. It was a dog leg left, par five. He snap hooked it. And Casper, in hindsight, beat him in the playoff. Now, the point I'm trying to make is that Hogan made a statement 100 years ago that there's not enough time in the day to master one shape. Locke pulled the ball, Gary drew it, Nicholas Trevino, all the great players, Tiger, hit the ball left to right. Now, once you've done that, the difference between hitting a ball left to right, as you know, and hitting it right to left is vastly different. With left to right, you have to be explosive in the lower half to dominate the upper half. Now, suddenly Tiger switches all that around, goes quiet in the legs to now hook the ball, he now gets himself into a terrible scenario where before, when he was great, as Paul Azinger quoted, he had one miss. Now to the viewer, that's when your bad shot goes one way. Now he's got two misses. Because in the old days, his bad shot leaked right. He was conscious of that all the time. When he had a good day, he never hit a bad shot. Now with all this work that he's doing in the last five, six years, trying to now go the other way, everyone's legs slow down the legs, release the right side, da 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 da, get more behind the ball, get more under, all of a sudden the hook is coming in. So now when he aligns himself to the left, in the old days he would align left, clear the left side, release and the ball would slide back to the middle of the fairway. Now with all the, the drills he's doing now, he's setting up left, the lower half is going dead because he's practicing all day to hook the ball, the upper body becomes active and effective, he's now pulling it, but as we've seen, three fairways left. Yeah. Now, once you've done that, why change? It, it's beyond comprehension when you go back to history Jack Nicklaus had one coach, and it was the same swing, the same thought. All he had to do was practice all day doing that same thing. And the final point is, you look at its immediate past history. Patrick Harrington, three majors in, I think it was 18 months, fires his coach. He's now got a new coach, he hasn't won since. Because the swing thoughts, your whole mindset changes. Familiarity. Familiarity's out the window. Um, Martin Keimer, when he won the PGA, everything was going left to right. Ah, now I've got to go the other way. Couldn't hit his hat. Now he's back to the left to right. But he, he does say in his defense that he's a more all-round player. But I don't accept that. 
Nicholas never intentionally, or Hogan in his, at the height of his career, never intentionally hit a hook unless he had to do it around a tree or whatever. Every shot was left to right. Yeah. So I think that's Tiger's main problem. Well, I think we need to take that, <clears throat> the time now to go back to 97. And he won the tournament by 12 shots, but it was very clear that his distance control was a little out. He didn't have a shape that he could trust. He completely overpowered Augusta, and obviously since they've made all sorts of changes, kind of tiger-proofing the golf course, which is another discussion all, all by itself. But um, let's take a look at some footage there um, and have a look at what was good and bad about that particular swing. The sequence here is when Tiger was with Butch, a, to me a glaring error in what takes place very commonly now in golf is this lateral move off the ball. You can see the Tiger's head is moving quite substantially out the circle and you can see the massive gap between the line on his left hip at address and the, the gap between the hip and the line at the top of the backswing. Now what this does, it means that under pressure it takes you an awful lot longer to get back to the ball. So when you start quickening up as Tiger did with the driver, the legs start driving, but because of the little bit of panic under pressure, he couldn't quite get onto his left side quick enough, so the result was a big block to the right. This was his only bad shot, and I'm telling you that was the only cause of Tiger's block to the right, that lateral move off the ball. That's the only criticism with Butch Harmon. The one observation I have as well is that Tiger tended to take the club back a little bit with the right hand, so his right elbow pulled the club across the line. So when he got to the top of the backswing, his club face and club head were pointing well to the right of the target. And this made him have to manipulate quite a lot to get the club back on line. So the thing that he worked on mostly with Butch in the early days was to get more rotation of his left forearm down an extension of the target line. And by doing that, his right elbow stayed a little bit softer. And, and what a lot of the coaches in America call it is the elbow gets deep. It gets across your body inside the line. So by rotating the forearm more down an extension of your target line, the club gets more what we call in front of your body and the club was now beautifully over Tiger's right shoulder. And then all the assets that he had from a young age with a beautiful leg drive, the great hip rotation and obviously brilliant hands, suddenly his, his swing started to click and the consistency um, came back and that's when he started to become a prolific winner. Now what we're going to do is take a look a little bit forward to 2003-2004 when Hank Haney started to get involved on the scene here and some very basic changes that he started to make to Tiger's game that really led to a lot of frustration and controversy. He did have some success with Tiger, he won a number of majors with him, but a lot of the success could be attributed to the work that he'd done previously with Butch. So Dad, let's take a look at his swing during the Hank Haney period and see if we can pick up a couple of things that uh, he was doing that were very, very obvious. Well, you can see very obviously that there's no lateral move, but I'm almost certain in saying, in the book anyway, in The Big Miss, that this is when Tiger started having this obsession with hitting the ball right to left as well as left to right and controlling it. But it's very subtle. You can't actually pick it up on one sequence. But I'm talking about the thought process of slowing the legs down and releasing the club more. But now you mustn't forget that by not moving laterally like he's doing now, and he was still trying to cut the ball, I think he would have been perfect. But now with no lateral move and slowing the legs down, as you know, you now can come over it very quickly and this massive pull, I think this is the seed that um, sort of sowed his uh, demise. I agree completely. There's a total lack of movement off the ball. But added to that, there's a distinct laid off position at the top of the backswing. He worked really hard on that rotation of the left forearm. So he was now in a position to attack the ball on a better plane. But with the, the drive to hit the ball right to left, he sometimes got his club stuck behind his body. 
He had the big leg drive that was still ingrained in his swing and now the club started to get behind him. And one of the things that talking to a lot of coaches through the years, over the last seven or eight years that I've learned about uh, what Tiger went through, is Butch started messing with Tiger's eye line. When he first started with Butch, he, his eye line was a little bit steeper on the plane and what Butch did is got him standing a little bit taller, which made him swing more around the plane and then that caused him to get the club stuck behind. So what Haney did is to get the eye line a bit more over the ball, got the club more down the line, got the rotation of the left and forearm got back, steeper. got a bit steeper. Mm -hmm. But now they started to mess with the, the speed of the legs and you know the right hand got harder and harder. And I think what we need to be wary of here as well or, or aware of is the body started to change. He's gone from a lithe, lean, mm -hmm. explosive youngster to this Adonis, you know, this monster of a man. Um, but it's all upper body. Correct. Well, yeah. he's he had very explosive legs, but the upper body became bulky. I think the natural flow to his swing started to, to um, change. His ability to rotate um, into the, the top of the backswing. You know, you look at the 2000 US Open at Pebble Beach, the position he was getting the club to at the top, the balance, the tempo back to the ball. And that's what the viewer at home needs to take. The amount of shoulder turn, the pause at the top of the backswing, the aggressive move into the left side into a balanced position and that's what we're seeing less and less of now with Tiger but yet his rival now but good friend Rory McIlroy that's what he's found monster turn incredible balance but enormous speed the result speed with the leg correct yeah. but the result is he's hitting it in the fairway yeah. and that's why he's winning I just want to make one point to the viewer now that when you're under pressure the first thing that fails you are your legs we call it weak knee, that's exactly what takes place. Your legs go numb and dead, which gets your upper body hyperactive. Now that's why all the great players, especially Hogan and Nicholas, under pressure they said they got better because they had this incredible inbuilt clearing of the left well, side. Let's stop there, let's bring up a, a, a clip on Ben Hogan now. Why don't you talk to this clip right here? Perfect. Take us through it. Well, here you can see Hogan at address and this massive rotation. The right leg is at nearly a 30 or 40 degrees, way inside his right foot, the weight, and he hasn't moved laterally. What is taught now that you swing in a barrel? This just proved, disproves that theory totally. You can now see that as Hogan initiates the downswing by moving laterally to the left, and getting his belly button violently pointing at target, you can see how late he is, but how dominant that left side is against a firm head. There is no way on earth under any circumstances can this ball go left. Now under pressure, all he had to do was complete his turn. There is no ways with this swing, with that wind up, his legs would ever go dead on him under pressure. What I like about it as well is, is sure, the turn was massive, the drive into the left side, the belly button was rotating, but he made the famous statement he wished he had three right hands, and a lot of people have misconstrued that, okay. hit with the right side. What they don't understand is that his left side was so educated, he had such dominance with it, he was free under pressure to release the right hand. Okay. And that's what people take for granted. We stand there all day on the range and right through to to the top players that we get the chance to work with, the constant battle is to use the legs Correct. and to transfer the weight. So the last thing you should ever be doing is drilling the right hand. I have no doubt that the right hand does work, but what Hogan spent his entire life doing was developing the left side. Correct. And there's the proof there. And that is a swing that nobody could better under pressure. Right, Jay, so let's get started now. Looking forward to giving this a rip. Jay, tell us a bit about the fitting experience that's on offer here in your golfers club stores. Well Don, you know nowadays nobody buys a driver or a set of irons without making use of some, you know, swing slash, you know, golf ball tracking uh, sure. technology. We use Flightscope, it's an incredible technology, it's what they call Doppler radar technology and it was developed by some guys in Cape Town, clever guys, Amazing. and I believe that even the US government has used some of their technology, so yeah. this is really, really good stuff. It's used to track the, the, the boats in the sea and missile tracking and, and all stuff like that. So, I mean, it really is very, very, very precise. And we make use of it just for a couple of things. We're trying to get an idea on, first of all, how far the guy's hitting the driver, how much spin he's putting on the ball, the launch angle, and how much of the club face actually making contact right. with what we call the smash factor. Sure. Now you've just hit three drivers, yeah. 
and you're a good player, so it's quite easy. You know, it's a lot easier to fit guys that hit the ball consistently than yeah. it is to, you know, for the average 24 handicap. Because sometimes we get 24 handicaps walking, they want to get fitted, and we love 24 handicaps. Yeah. So without 24 handicaps, we wouldn't have a business. Sure. But by the same token, you need to hit a couple of shots in the middle of the club face yeah. or there or thereabouts to get an indication sure. of how well you know we can fit you you know we need to get that and uh, that, that data and then we can say right this driver's performing better so you hit a callaway big bertha alpha driver a cobra biasal plus driver and the tailor-made sldr yeah. which is one of the better drivers yeah. from this year and essentially what has happened is you'll see you know on the screen you you, you see the ball fly yeah. on all of your t-shirts unfortunately i don't want to give you a hard time but you've hit everything a little bit left yeah, fractionally so you've hit yeah. it down the left side you're a bit but draw slash okay. heading towards pull okay yes the nice thing about this it gives you a grouping yeah so you can say well geez i've hit one straight i've hit one off the planet on the left hand side and i've hit another one in the left hand rough so chances are this driver i'm only hitting one out of three well okay. but if we find a driver you make three reasonable swings yeah and the grouping is pretty close you say well i've got a driver now that i hit straight now okay. i've got to find one the the, the correct fitting yeah. that makes me a little bit further okay, okay? Then it tells you your face angle. Yes. Will you come into the ball open? Will you come into the ball closed? Yes. So you give it night gear. If you're using it left, then obviously the club face was slightly yes. closed. Okay. And it gives you your club head speed. It gives you the launch angle. Now, when we talk about rainbow flight, when yeah. you're fitting somebody with a driver, it's very important that you don't get the ball flying like a donkey drop. Yeah. And you also got to get some kind of flight out of it because, you know, uh, people think, geez, I'm hitting my 10 and a half so well. If I move to a nine and a half, I'll hit it further. Yeah. The truth is, you're going to start hitting it lower, yeah. and the dispersion of the club face yeah. becomes more acute. Okay. You start missing fairways. Right. Also, you've got to take things into account, like if you're playing in Africa, most golf courses have got Kukuyu. Sure. So if you're hitting a low tee shot, it's great in winter for two months, yeah. but as soon as the rains come, okay. you're going to be hitting it 180 meters, it's going to plug into the fairway and run five minutes, you're hitting 185. Yeah. But when you're playing with it in winter, you're hitting yeah. it 285, you think, geez, what a great driver, but sure. it's not the optimum. Okay. And then ultimately, we've taken these three drivers, you've hit three shots with each driver, and you seem to be hitting the Cobra by a cell yeah. the best. Typically, your club hit speed was in the region of 106 miles an hour, very consistent. You actually, your club hit speed with the SLDR driver at one swing was 108, which is pretty decent. That's yes. 170 kilometers an hour, which is good. The smash factor, a perfect smash is 1.5. Okay. And you're in the region of 1.44, 1.46, okay. and 1.42, yeah. okay? Yeah. The other thing we take into account is the spin rate. Yeah. If the spin rate is too low, yeah. falls out of the air. Okay. If the spin rate's too high, exactly what Tiger's been doing. Right. You know, with his new golf swing where he sort of gets on yes. top of it and smothers it or whatever, he's hitting these high balloons yeah. to the right. And that's obviously way too much spin. And that's a common fault amongst golfers in general. That's Absolutely. A handicap. And then... When you take all of this, it gives you the amount of time that the ball was in the air. It gives you the vertical descent, which is, was it coming down too much this way? Yeah. Was it coming down too flat? Right. So with all this data, we're able to work out a driver. It might be any brand, and I'm, in, yeah. I'm not partisan to, you know, to any, any brand at all. Sure. We sell all brands here. So if you can find the perfect amount of launch yeah. with the right amount of spin and get the max amount of roll, and you're not hitting it like this, yeah. then you know you've got a, a winner. On this week's Echelon Did You See That Moment, we take a look at Tiger Woods. He makes a swing here where he pulls the ball well to the left. It's so explosive as he rotates out the way, he's put immense pressure on his lower spine, resulting in him collapsing to his knees. It's got us all talking as to whether his body can stand up to the rigors of tournament golf. Now we get to the, the Sean Foley era now, and listen, I mean, the man's had enormous success with, you know, a lot of other players. When I say enormous, he's, he's helped a guy like Justin Rose win a major, Hunter Mahan's been a great ball striker for a long time, but has he been any good for a guy like Tiger? So let's take a look at, at this sequence and try and pick up a couple of things that Tiger's worked on and notice the changes. Well, the first thing you can see here is that the toes are bowed in. We were taught that as kids, to keep your right foot at 90 degrees to your line of flight and your left foot splayed out because you want restriction on the way back, but you want freedom on the way through. But he's bowed his in, Correct. but it has stopped him moving to the right. Sure. But more importantly, you mustn't forget that he's now trying to hook the ball. So now, from that position, you're now bowed in your right foot. You've got restricted hip turn on the way back. So now you've got no left side domination on the way back to the ball. So what happens, your upper body now starts being hyperactive 
but your subconscious says, now hang on, I'm coming over the top, I better stop this. So now to keep out of your own way, you start, you're not moving laterally anymore, you're now spinning out and you can see he's on tiptoe at impact now, which is ridiculous. Tiger used to be so inside like Nicholas, on the inside of his left heel through the ball, he's now on tiptoe going through the ball and you can actually see a semblance of a chicken wing now going past impact. Well, I think exactly that. He's almost applied some of that dreaded stack and tilt uh, no, philosophy no. where the shoulders, the hips and the knees are stacked on top of each other. He's still got a decent rotation, but as you say, because the toes are in, there's no wind up with the, the right hip going back. When he was in his prime, there was a little bit of knee movement. Jack Nicklaus, Palmer, Hogan, Vijay Singh, Tom Watson especially, monster shoulder turn, the left knee folded in a little bit, allowed the rotation, then from there you could get the leg drive. Tiger now doesn't have that wind up so he can't release through the ball and what Tiger has tried to work on is the swinging left philosophy now. Hogan in the clip that we showed just now his body's rotating left the club face is going down the line and the grip of the club is working left what Tiger's doing is because the body's not rotating left he's got the late release but he's wiping across the ball Correct. so he can't put the power in so he's searching for power He's so frustrated that it, at literally 21 years old, he hit a 350 and could get it out there. Now, you know, stronger than he was then, he can't hit it nearly that distance. But can I come in now? What is he talking about on every TV show and every Being interview more explosive. He did, He's getting more explosive. Right. Explosive against what? Yeah. His legs, he's nullified because he's trying to hook the ball. Correct. But again, a quick point on Foley, and this is not criticism, it's fact. You look at Justin Rose. Justin Rose's bad shot is what? A left. pull left. Same exactly as Hunter, the man. same technique. So, you know, again, to me, it's not open to discussion. If you hook a ball, it is not right to left spin. It is overspin. You cannot control it. If you hit a power fade, it's not left to right spin, it's underspin. That ball will pitch and stop where it lands. That's the difference between the super players and what Tiger was and where he's at at the moment. Well, I just think under pressure, and I mean, far be it for me to, to judge, but you know, as a fan, I used to feel so secure watching him on TV okay. under pressure, he could, he never really missed. Now, as you say, because he's got this violent hand speed, no leg drive to protect him, no weight shift that's really in control, the head is dropping all over the place. Um, so I think, you know, for the viewer at home to take away some points from this, you want to really keep your head still on the takeaway. Rotate around your spine, keep your weight on the inside of your right foot like we saw from Hogan. You want to maximize the shoulder turn, keep that left arm in control but going down the target line. So that's your wind up. Now to get back to the ball, there's a distinct slide towards the target with the left hip as the belly button's rotating. It's that rotary motion with the lower both. half, yeah. keeping the upper body quiet. Every great player is talking about hold the release as long as possible. Absolutely. At the last minute the club will release. So if we can get those moves in place, no matter what handicap you are, you're going to have success. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, in closing, I'd, I'd really like to see Tiger kind of swallow his pride and, and, and go back to the Butch Harmon, you know, method and, and make contact there because that's when he had a swing. If his body would allow it, you know, they talk about developing a swing to look after his body, but you know, the fitness regime, the, the weight training, you know, there's, we've talked to a lot of the biokineticists and top players that have obviously paid a lot of attention to their bodies. And there's been concern that he's pushed it too far now. He's in unknown territory. And it's almost like they're not sure what it's doing to him physically right now. But culmination of all this is now it's like a cancer. He now doesn't know where the ball's going, guaranteed, one left or one right. Now he's starting to miss those 10 footers short. You never ever saw Tiger go short. The bunker shots that he used to hit, which is not related to injury at all, he used to knock them stone dead all the time, now he's starting to skin them. His confidence is just collapsing like a pack of cards. It's sad, but you know, whether he'll come back, boy, the golfing well, gods are cruel. He's one of the greatest names in the history of sport, yeah. you know, one of the greatest minds. Um, and you know, he he's was top of every category. Correct. Well, he's got what it takes to get it back, but he's, he really needs to address it and maybe you know, pay attention to some of those key thoughts mm -hmm. because he's produced the goods, there's no doubt about that, so it's inside and so hopefully he'll be able to get with the right people and figure this out and we could see one of the great rivalries of all time with Rory McIlroy for the next four or five years. Let's hope.